to host you in India for the second summit of Forum of India Pacific Island Cooperation, FIPIC, as it is called now. I am deeply grateful to you for coming to India. I am aware that the journey is not short and you have busy schedules. But I also know that familiarity shrink distances. I was pleased to join our president in greeting you in Delhi yesterday. I hope you have enjoyed Delhi, Agra and Jaipur and that our team let you shop a bit. I hope you like your visit to Taj Mahal. If you are visiting India for the first time, I'm sure you are struck by the size, the culture, the diversity, and the sea of people. Like we are wonderstruck at the thought of a nation living as a small, small community in harmony with nature on a beautiful island. It is this diversity that makes our planet so special. I especially welcome you in this historic city of Jaipur. The pink city is known for the pink sandstones of its famous palaces. It is a city of heroism and valor of art and heritage, and above all, a strong tradition of hospitality. I thank Chief Minister Simati Vasundra Raje for her generous support. This is the first regional summit that I am hosting in India. This is one will always remain very special for me. It is also special because India and specific island countries are setting an example of partnership for this century. It is a partnership forced by shared aspirations and challenges. It is shared by the belief that all nations, small and large, have equal stakes in this world. We also recognize that a globalized world has deepened interdependence and changed our perception of geography. In particular, the center of gravity of global opportunities and challenges are shifting to the Pacific and Indian Ocean region. The fortunes of nations in and, in and around the two oceans are interlinked. For this region, the tides that bear hopes and bring challenges to the shores in and the Pacific Island are the same. That is why some call the region the Indo-Pacific region. But that is not all that brings us together. Small island states may add up to small land area and even smaller population, but they are as important for us as any other nation. We have and will stand with you in international forums. It is with this sense of solidarity that we made the strongest contribution to the six conferences in Samoya last year, which led to the evolution of the Samoya pathway. We also supported the interests of seeds 
on capacity building in the latest outcome document on the post-2015 development agenda. India stands shoulder to shoulder with you for a dedicated seat for seats is an expanded and reformed United National Security Council in both categories. India will support the realization of your vision of Pacific regionalism. It is a shining example of cooperative regionalism that should inspire others around the world. Excellencies, the world may see you a small island with the modest populations, I see you as a large ocean states with a vast potential. Some of you have exclusive economic zones that are larger than the landmass and exclusive economic zone of India taken together. We are at the cusp of new era where oceans like space will become important drivers of our economies. Their sustainable use can bring prosperity and give us clean energy, new medicines and food security beyond just fisheries. Ocean is critical to India's future too. That is why in the past year, I have focused a lot on ocean economy both in India and international engagement. I see huge potential for our cooperation in this area. India was pleased to stand with you in ensuring that sustainable use of oceans and marine resources constitute a distinct element in the sustainable development goals in the United Nations that were finalized recently. Our global challenges are similar. Climate change is an ex existential threat to the Pacific Islands. It is also taking a toll on the teeming millions on India's shoreline of 7,500 kilometers and it's nearly 1,300 islands. We both seek a concrete and effective outcome on climate change at COP21 in Paris late this year. We work together for a separate goal on climate change in the substantial development goals and in a manner that addresses the interests of development countries. We must also build a closer partnership in pursuit of our shared aims in the WTO, for example, on fisheries. The United Nations is at historic milestone of its 70th anniversary. I have written to all member states on charting the course for the United Nations for the years ahead. Seven decades after the United Nations was created, the world is a different place. We have four times as many nations. We have new challenges like climate change. We have new frontiers like space and ocean. We live in a globalized world with a transformed economy in the digital age. The United Nations must keep pace with the changing world. We must press for reform in the United Nations Security Council to ensure its relevance and effectiveness in the 21st century. We seek your support for the text of the President of the General Assembly as a basis for reforming the Security Council. Your voice of support for India's permanent membership of the Security Council will give the United Nations the global char character and balance that mirrors our age. Excellencies, just as PIPIC should become our springboard for a stronger global partnership, we can also enrich each other through our bilateral 
regional cooperation. During the last summit, India announced a number of new initiatives with the Pacific Island countries. I am pleased that we have been able to deliver on many of our commitments. These include increasing India's granting aid to Pacific Island countries from 125,000 to 200,000 US dollars, e-tourist visas, deputation of Indian experts in the area of choir industry, and a special training program for diplomats of the Pacific Island countries. Trade, more than aid, is the enable for development. I am pleased to announce the establishment of the PIPIC Trade Office in the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry in New Delhi. This is just the first step towards promoting trade and investment opportunities between India and Pacific Island countries. Excellencies, people of Indian origin in many of your countries provide a special human link between us. Excellencies, I eagerly look forward to hearing your views. I will also share my thoughts on our future initiatives, take this wonderful partnership forward. I want to say a special word of thanks for your support for the record-breaking adoption of International Day of Yoga by the United Nations and for making the first International Day of Yoga a grand success in your countries. In conclusion, I wish to say that the world is more magnificent for the rich gems of island states. And life on these islands is a beautiful proof of God's will and human spirit. We will work together to sustain and nurture some of nature's most precious gifts and some of this world's most wonderful people. Thank you.